All right, all right. Shake it up. We're going to shake it up. It is November 5th. Today. That's card. <laughs> is that the card? Yeah. Shake it up. Let's uh, shake it up. That's, shake it up. <laughs> That's my Pharrell. Do you, know how many, do you know how many nightclubs I went to to listen to bands do covers of that? Oh, man. The car. That's... Like one of my all time favorite bands, New York Flyer. New York Flyer, nice. Were they upstate band? Yeah, they played. They were like basically in Syracuse. Wait, we ought to tell them first. This is off the chest podcast with Joe Cap. This is Z Man. We're getting like, we're so excited that you're listening. We're getting right into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We yeah, have. Yeah, they were in upstate. Like, you know who might know them? One of our. Update listeners, Maurice Lapine might have heard about New York Flyer. Absolutely. Was was Bill Barry part of that uh, deal? Was he? Uh, I'm sure Bill. I'm sure Bill knows Bill them. Barry I'm sure. He's a big person on the on the central New York music scene. So yeah. I'm sure he knows about them too. Doing the college circuit, the whole works. Yeah, you know, but yeah. like New York Flyer, they were happening. Like you. You grew up like a little north of the city. Did you right. have a lot of uh, were, did, were you cover a bands guy going out like cover bands? Oh yeah, stuff? we had great cover bands. We had let's see, we had Southern Cross, which was Southern a Cross? yeah, they were heard of them. You, yeah, they were awesome. They used to do yeah, all Southern were. rock, almond yep. Skinnered, all that stuff. And then we had bands like the Cunningham Brothers. The Cunningham brothers were from the Bronx, and they were awesome. They actually played at Tommy Hanny's uh, wedding, and really? uh, yes, and I sang Soul Man with them, and they are Did you really. I swear, no, I swear to people, God, we have to tell people yeah. that don't really know, like like Cap. Cap was in a band when he was oh, yeah. in college. Well, and his band, like it was like must see night. When Cap was in the band, because all the crazies were out. Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun. We had I was in with Bill Barry. We had uh, SOS when I first started with those guys. Um, that was the best. I think that that we were we had a great band. We had a horn section. We had these guys. What they were was we were Sons of Saluri, which was the jazz band. All the guys from the jazz band got together and 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 started a band. And Bill Barry asked me one day, he said, hey, you want to sing? We're going to do this this gig at the, at the Union. Uh, so I did Blues Brothers with this other guy, I forgot his name, and it went, went off really well. And then the guys were like, hey, man, you, why don't you sing his, for was us? Was his name Blues? <laughs> yeah, right. I forgot it. I got to see, that's Bill Barry. Bill Barry's going to have to send us an well, email what his name was. Bill Barry on with us. Yes. Like, what, like maybe for a holiday edition. Absolutely. We got to have some some different people on because I, I think people I don't care what anybody says I do think people like to relive happy moments in their lifetime like yes when they went through periods and, and you know like not getting like deep as you grow older you have ups and downs in your family uh with your person things happen people in your circle have sure. good things and bad things that happen. So I think we all like to revisit like good times throughout our life. And, oh, absolutely. And, and those, like for those people that don't know, Joe and I attended like SUNY Oswego in the early eighties. And let, that was animalistic times like animal house. Yeah, it was like animal house. It really was. I mean, people think that, that Animal House movie was a little exaggeration. Not really. I mean, no, Oswego no. was just yeah, like we, that. There, yeah, but that was back when basically the rules were lax. They're not yes. like they are today where we're so stuck up with sticks up our you-know-where yep. and we walk around and we're like politically correct oh god we're not gonna offend people oh Listen, my god when yeah. we were when the times were we you know i know this is gonna sound weird joe but i think you might agree when we were offending people people were happy even if you were offended you eventually came around and just said you know what i it's like just get with the crowd absolutely this is what it is 
Yep. And uh, like now we're into like different times and like but it's that- po- you know political correctness bullshit, which is completely has changed our culture. Uh, people can't make jokes. Uh, I mean, you just watch All in the Family. Watch All right. in the Family or now, the 2024. Or the spinoffs. All the spinoffs, like, exactly. Like the Jeffersons. Yep. Uh, Maude. Norman Lear. All Norman Lear yeah, stuff. Norman Lear. What? Norman Lear. If you're not familiar with this guy, Google him. Absolutely. Like he, everything he touched was gold. He's you know gold. what he reminds you of today? He reminds you of that uh, guy. What's um, the guy that does Tombstone? Oh, I. Uh, the director. Taylor, yes. What's his name? Oh, uh, I, um, you know what? No, I got, we I, we got to look him up. Yeah. Uh, well, well but, somebody who's listening, send us an email with his name. <laughs> yeah, give him the email address. Yeah, there you go. What's our email address, Z Man? It is off the chest eighty four at yahoo. Dot com. So it's uh, Taylor Sheridan, by the way, is the guy. And I didn't even have there to look go. that up. There you go. You know what? Your brain it, works. Sometimes all the roads don't correct. They don't connect in my brain, Joe. But every now and then, I, when I see a fork in the road, I take it. You and take it's it. the right one. That's right, Yogi. All right. So let's. Uh, off, let's it's off the chest. It's off the chest. Let's get, let's get some stuff off our chest. Let's got? start off. Let's start off with NFL me? football. I got to get a couple things off my chest. All right, go ahead. What are we going to talk right. about getting off your chest? The, the football rules are, especially in the NFL. Oh, oh my God. I, what is going on? So there was, I did not even know this rule. Evidently, this rule is in the books, is that when you fake a punt, right, and you're the punter, and you fake the punt, and now you're going to throw the ball to a receiver on your team, that receiver is fair game. There's no interference. You could tackle the guy. You... Who the heck knows that rule, that that is well, not a, I mean, interference? Well, if the guy's throwing the ball, if you're like a quarterback or let's say you're a punter. Right. Or let's, let's say you're a wide receiver, you do like an end around or, a, you know, a flea flicker pass. Yeah, of course that guy's going to be live going down the field. But, but I mean, but, when you pass him the ball and he's a receiver, why is – you could tackle him before he catches the ball and no interference call. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, he what that can't. Where that, did that come from? That is Where the rule because it was. I didn't in, know that either. Yes, so there you just scooped me. Look so it tell up. Me, where, where did this come from? One, I forget which game it was. Um, maybe it was was it the uh, Bengals game? So I, I'm trying to remember which game it was. But then they said, "Oh yeah, that's that's a rule. You know, no, you can. He's fair game when you go out for a pass as a punter. And if you guys are listening out there, you guys are sports, uh, you know, rules experts, let us know if that's not the case. But that's that's what they said. They said that if the punter throws the ball to a receiver, the receiver's fair game. He can you can tackle him basically. So well, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, Joe. I didn't know that, so you yeah. just scooped me. So well, good for you. That's what I mean. All right, now, another thing I want to go up over is watching the Packers, Detroit Lions, your Packers, your pack, yep. who I think. Yep. That was a tough I, one. Because I, I, that's a they, tough one. That the was Lions, tough one. listen, the Lions are the best team in no the question. NFC. No it's question. It's no longer like nope. the Eagles, the 49ers, the Cowboys, like your perennial teams. I got a little newsflash. The Lions are here, and they're going to be roaring. And they made a significant trade today and picked up the defensive end, Ladarius Smith, from the Browns. Wow. Dude, this team has got everything going for yeah, them. Yeah, they're ready they're, to roll. you got to score 30 a game to beat that team. And, they got and, it rolling. And Jared Goff is definitely the front runner for the NFC MVP. I mean, uh, right? I mean, you know, I would say either uh, close. You know what? I would say, I would say yes. I would agree with you, but Ooh. I would also, you're going to laugh at me, maybe Go when ahead. I throw this one in. Uh, the Commanders' quarterback, Jalen Daniels. Uh, okay, you can throw him in there, but I still and think Goff, one other guy Goff's numbers are off the charts. He's off the yep, charts. And I'll Who give else? You another guy that's got to Go be ahead. considered too. Go ahead. Is Saquon Barkley? Okay, yeah, he's in the conversation. I'll give you that too. But here's the other thing uh, What about that particular game. Okay. I love the elements in football. These yeah, dome the stadiums m- drive me effing crazy. Yep. You know, Detroit has a dome stadium. Uh, Minnesota has a – I want to see them freezing cold, rainy, 
windy, crappy weather football. That's what I want to see. And you don't yep. get to see that. It's ridiculous. Yep. You know, even At Lambeau Field and, and Joe, come you on. They have a 20 year waiting list for season tickets. Oh, I believe it. 20 years. I believe it. You're waiting for season tickets. That That's always, and I, you know, I talked to a lot of people that have been there. I actually know a season ticket holder that, that goes, uh, he, he's a transplanted, uh, capital district person where I live. I'm in the Saratoga area. Joe is in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Yes, sir. So, so this, this gentleman is a snowbird who goes to Florida but has uh, Packers season tickets. And I've always expired to go there. Maybe one of these days I'll get there. Absolutely. I've seen the Packers like all over the country. I've seen them in several stadiums, like from coast to coast. Yeah, you got to get there, Z. You got to get there. You got to go. And I, I'll tell you, though, their, their home field advantage isn't as great, I don't think, as it used to be. Why is that? I, I just don't think the team... I, I think the team this year is somewhat regressing. Everybody had them in the Super Bowl. Okay. And I think injuries are a big part of the game. And I think Jordan Love is still in a learning curve. Yeah, no, I, I get it. But I think the game against Detroit, you have to take with a grain of salt, meaning Detroit is is good. Not they're good, they're very good. And I think I think right now I think it's Detroit. And then you could make a case for Kansas City, but I'm going to give yeah, you two of scoopers course. in the AFC. I'm Go going to ahead. give you the Bills, and I'm, I'm going to give you the Bills, and I'm going to give you the Ravens. Well, the Bills and the Ravens are not necessarily sleepers. They're okay. they're the ones that are you know. Let's face it, uh, the Bills were the last team to beat. You know, well, here's a sleeper for you. Here's a real sleeper for All you. All right, go ahead. The Bengals. The yep. Bengals. I think they're out of. But you know what? That's the Bengals. That's another team that has some injury concerns, but they sure. did make a trade today, and they picked up uh, Khalil Her- Herbert uh, from the yeah from the Bengal uh, from the Bears rather, and I, he was being wasted there. And now they think that Zach Moss has a neck injury and could be out for the year. Right. So they needed like a backup to Chase Brown, so they picked this guy up. Yep. So I will be like, well. I, well on Thursday night, Joe, it's the yeah. Ravens and Bengals. Exactly. The good segue because that's exactly where I was going. That's going to be a good game. That's going to tell you a lot. That's going to tell yep. you a lot about Cincinnati. It's going to tell you a lot. Now Baltimore, they were on a they were on a, 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 a they were on a rampage Sunday after that loss to Cleveland. So yep. you know that they were they were ready to, to so but the I next game now we got we got all of a sudden the Bengals look like they they put up what are they they put up a forty spot I think uh, uh, Sunday or close to yep. it so now yep. we got them going head to head so we'll see what happens I'm excited for that game that's finally we got a good Thursday night game to watch um, yeah fine, but yep, I would agree there there Joe Burrow he's the guy he can beat Mahomes one of the few guys who beat Mahomes. You know, a couple of guys got close. You know, I mean, obviously the Ravens got close, but they didn't do it. Uh, and the Bills got close, but they didn't do it. But Burrow's the only guy. He could say, yep. I beat Mahomes at, like at Burrow, Kansas City. Man. I think he's such a good quarterback. Oh, he's a great – he's not a good quarterback. He's a great quarterback. He's just got to stay healthy, and the team around him has got to stay healthy, and they'll be – and the defense has got to be a, a little bit better. But, you know, that's like, hey, what else can you say? That's 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 what you can say about a lot of teams, you know. Um, but it's I just think they're the team that is a sleeper team in my book. But yep. uh, but anyway, so that's that's where we are in the NFL so far. Halfway oh. through the season, Z-Man. Believe you know it's halfway through are, the Joe? season? Where? Yep, yep, we're almost halfway through the season. You know where else we are, Joe? Yes. We're at our run to the end zone. Yes! Run to the end Isn't zone. It, I- are you aware of my my record against the spread this year? Let's go. Let's hear it. After last week, Joe, we are a documented on the program. 14 wins, 6 losses. You're the man, Z-Man. So, so take Z-Man's so picks our, and you'll make so some money. I, well, we're going to try to make some money. Our run to the end zone is sponsored by the End Zone Restaurant, 227 Park Avenue and Mechanical. Stop in, say hello. Great specials Monday through Sunday. Great specials Saturday and Sunday for college and NFL 
accent. And, and tell so. him and tell him you were listening to the podcast and you wanted to come down for their delicious food and the well, uh, libations. Well, they, well, especially the libations. So let's get after it. We're fourteen <laughs> and six, Joe. We're awesome. going to try to make some money for everybody out there. We've got another six pack. We've got three college, three pro games. All right, let's hear them. And the NCAA, Friday night, Memphis is at home to Rice. Memphis was one of our plays last week that kind of crapped out. So we're going to go right back to them because they're in position for that uh, BCS top 12 playoff. They're on the fringe now. They were holding around that 12, but now they're like probably around 15. We're going to go with Memphis minus nine against Rice at home to take the cover. we okay. got two other games in college football. We're going to side with the Syracuse Orange. Ooh, SU. You hear that, Moses? SU is on the road at Boston College on Saturday. They're taking two and a half. I'm going to say that Syracuse is going to ride the momentum. They came a long way back in the game against Virginia Tech on Saturday. They came all the way back from, I believe, a 13-point deficit to beat Virginia Tech in overtime. So we're going to side with them plus two and a half. In our third game of the uh, afternoon, we're going to go with the Texas Longhorns. It is a big number. It is 21. But I think that it's now or never for them to get into the top four for the uh, BCS. So they're playing the University of Florida. Florida came off a big game against the University of Georgia and the outdoor cocktail party. They were tough, but they couldn't bring it home. We're going to lay 21 with Texas. And over it's at Florida. Texas, correct? That is at Texas. Yeah, so I was in say. the okay. NCAA, we're taking Memphis minus nine, Texas minus 21, and Syracuse plus two. In the NFL, First of all, hold your seatbelt, Joe. Okay, let's We're go. We're taking the Jets. What? We're taking the Jets plus one at Arizona against oh, the Cardinals. The kiss of death. The Cardinals are <laughs> on a run. They've won their last three games. The Jets have no business being in this game. The number's only one. Okay. I'm taking the Jets plus one. Well, you took them last week. Six. What that? You took them last week. Yeah, we took them last week. And I thought you were nuts. I'm st- but here I am. I'm coming back. With and I still Jets think you're nuts. <laughs> All right. I'll give you another nutty one. Go ahead. I'm taking the Jaguars plus four at home against the Vikings. The Ooh. Jaguars should have, could have, and probably, I can't believe they didn't, win the game in Philadelphia against the Eagles. The Eagles did everything to give it to them. Actually, the Jaguars had the ball inside the 10, inside two minutes, and – Trevor Lawrence got picked off in the end zone, so they lost 28-23. I'm going with the Jaguars this week because All if right. they don't beat the Vikings at home, they're probably going to fire their coach. Yeah, I. you so, know what? He is definitely – Peterson is ready. Uh, yep. Yeah, they're already mumbling and grumbling who's going to go there. So, yeah, they got to win for his sake. And, and as my third pick in the NFL, yep. that's exactly why I'm going with this team. The Saints fired their coach, Dennis right. Allen. They're home to the Falcons. They're a a three-and-a-half-point dog at home as of this time. I'm going with the Saints. All right. Give me the three-and-a-half home dog, and they're going to bring it home. So in the NFL, we're taking the Jets plus one, the Jags plus four, and the Saints plus three-and-a-half. And And that is our Run to the End Zone six-pack sponsored by the End Zone Restaurant. 227 Park Avenue. Mechanical. Yeah, do you know there I came across let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um I drove by through Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Just where's this that? Twitter. I don't know, somewhere off uh seventy eight. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> seventy eight well, uh, route seventy eight. So, so it's gotta be in like the eastern part of the state, right? Oh, uh, it's in the middle of nowhere. Mechanicsburg, oh, okay. Pennsylvania. Did you stop? Hell no. I just saw what? it and I said I got to tell Z-Man that there's a Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, so. I'll take your word for it. You know what? I'll use my Atlas skills. Oh, it's Joe, definitely there. It's just and I'll nothing try to there. Find it. There's, I'll have it, a report. It's in the middle of nowhere. All I saw was freaking cornfields and cow crap. So you know what else, Joe? What I was not was not able 
to locate a Babe Ruth candy bar. What? For Halloween. I couldn't find it. Are you kidding me? That's Dude, absurd. I candy. No, I went into a candy store. What? They, and they, they didn't sell it. They, they were selling oh. She tried to sell me a Reggie bar. Or are you they had a Reggie bar? Yeah, they had a Reggie bar. Oh shit. Was it like yeah. a what was it like 40 years old of Reggie bar? Probably. Oh my god. I couldn't find a Babe Ruth candy bar, but I want you to know that I did go I didn't go trick or treat. I walked in my neighborhood and my neighbors and the teens <laughs> always have they're the house on the street. <laughs> That had big candy bars. Yeah. So, like, you tell all the kids, man, when you're out, like, trick-or-treating. That's the... Like, yeah, you got to go over to Grand Street. To yeah. The they got big candy bars. Yo, I had a Snickers bar and nice. a Miller Light on Halloween. Nice. Yeah, the big and Snickers. Both tasted good. The big Milky Way, the big Baby Ruth. That's the house where you got to go. They have yeah, those. That's where I, I, I always did that. You know what? And I told them on Halloween night. I would actually walk around the block and come back as another person. So nice. I, 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 first I went up as a neighbor. Right. And then the next time I, w- I walked around the block and I came back, I came as a beggar. <laughs> nice. So I begged for a Miller Lite and they gave me one. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. So it was good. I just had to tell you that. Yeah, no, I got you. I got, you know, I got to find a baby Ruth because I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to go, f- I'm going to find a, and I'm, I'm going to send it to you, man. I, I'm telling yeah, you. I, I, I want it. And again, if our listeners, if you have any comments or suggestions for us, off the chest 84 at yahoo.com. Let us know where they sell baby Ruth bars in mechanics. Because I can't find it. All right, I'm going to find one for you. I'm going to find right. some What else are you going to find for me? All right, well, one thing I want to find is I am so pissed off. I'm going to put a bow on the baseball season with this. All right, let's do it, man. All right. Like, I, I couple, have my own opinion. A couple things right. I got to get off my chest. All right. All right. I am so sick and tired of the acceptance of the Yankees just losing, and it has become – an absolute horrible thing that really only the fans seem to care about. I want to see players pissed off. I want to see players. L.A. is basically trolling the Yankees. These yep. uh, these players are trolling the Yankees, saying they stay they're terrible fielders, and which they are, which they should be. But I want to see some Yankees. I want to see Aaron Judge get fucking pissed off and say, you but know what? Won't. You know what? But you won't. And I want to see Cole. I want to see Garrett Cole get pissed off. I want to see somebody get pissed off and say, you know what? We're going to win the World Series next year. We're going to be there. Not the way they're constructed. Not exactly. I want to see guys pissed off guys on the Yankees. You know, that's the thing. I hate to see Rizzo go because he seemed like he could be one of those kind of guys. Nah, he's done. But he might be done. Okay, fine. But it seems like everybody else is like, whatever. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, whatever. That is that's not Paul O'Neill. That's not Thurman Munson. That's not even Reggie Jackson. I mean, these guys were like, you know, win at all, win at all costs. Meaning not win at all costs, but they're, they're giving a thousand percent. Players, yeah, they'd rather go to first base and pat and, each other. On and the here's back here's my second. Say, hey, how you doing? Here's my second thing to get off the chest. I'm sick and tired of the highest bidder. I'm going to the highest bidder. Not, and I, and Juan Soto, to be honest with you, I don't think he's coming to the Yankees. I don't think he is. And I'm, I I'm, I'm I got to start to accept it. I want guys who want to win, not because they're, they they want to go and win. See, I want to follow a team that wants to win as much as the fans. That's what I want. And with this but, baseball season, the Mets gave me more of that than the Yankees. And I'm telling you right now, I think the Mets should stay away from Soto, and I think the Mets should sign their guys and keep their farm system going and get a couple of players to put in here and put in there and get some pitching. And guess what? They have a good a chance as anybody to win a World Series. They showed me that last year. Look at how they beat Philly. Philly on paper looked like one of the best teams in baseball. But the Mets... Wanted it more. Simple as that. The Yankees, I, I think, you know, okay, you want to say L.A. had a better team? Whatever. The Yankees could have beat L.A. if they wanted it more. Let's face it. And that's what I want to see 
uh, in the season next year, I want to see a team that wants it more than anybody else. And that's I, I had to get off my chest there, Z man. All right, that's cool. And I agree with a lot of things you said. First of all, let's start with the Mets. All right, so the Mets, I did some research today. All right, so this is the Mets free agent. So I just want you to listen to what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to ask you a question. So free agents for the Mets this year are Pete Alonzo. Sign him. Harrison Bader. Uh, uh, A relief pitcher that I don't think got a chance to play. Okay. Jose Iglesias. Sean Sign Medina, him. Sign him. Martinez, Bill nah. Maton, Adam Adavito, nah, let him go. Jose Quintana, Brooke mm. Reilly, Luis Severino, Sign him. Drew Smith, Ryan Stanek, and Jesse Winker. Of those people, Winker may be signed. I, I, I think that, I mean, let's start at the top. I mean, you got to sign Alonzo. I, I mean, I really think you got to work out a deal with him. I, I think you stay away from Soto. So look what Soto did when he went to the Padres. When he went to the Padres, you thought maybe the pa- they sucked when he went to the Padres. And now look what the Padres did this year. They're probably well, the top five team in baseball. So well, he Soto was in the playoffs with the Padres for two years. Those teams made the playoffs. Okay, all right, you're all right, right. So, but they but sucked anyway, last year. So let's just. Let's stay on point with the Mets for a second. Go ahead. So those people, who would you bring back? All right, let's do it one more time. Would yeah. you bring back Alonzo? Yes. Would you bring back Bader? Maybe. Would you bring back Iglesias? Yes. Sean Manaya. Yes. J.D. Martinez? No. Okay, uh, relievers, Maton and Adovino. Either one of those guys? Gone, gone. All right, uh, starting pitchers. Quintana or Severino? Um, I, I think you got to bring them back both. I, both. All right, and then you got Stanek and Winker. I like Winker. He's a he's a, a he's a good guy off the bench. Winker. All right. So, if if that was your case, and you're going to bring these guys back, you still have to supplement that team. No question with pitching. That, so. All right. All right. So when you look at like free agents um, on the market, you you got guys like Corbin Burns. Yeah, I was just yeah the, on, on, from the Orioles. Who's on the Orioles? Yep. Yes, he's you the have, first guy I thought of. Exactly. You got to get you him. Yeah, Max Freed. Right from the uh, from Freed. the Braves. Yep. There's another one. So you. If you're the Mets, you really have to build your pitching staff. I agree. I personally would sign Manaya and Severino. I agree. Not, sign them both. Manaya is going to get more money than Severino, so that's your no problem. question. And you could get you could get outbid. You know, Manaya yeah. could sign on the West Coast with somebody with the Giants or something. I think the Giants are probably going to go after him. I'm just thinking, you know, I don't know if he's a West Coast guy. I think he's, I think he's a Simone guy or something, maybe. Or, yeah, yeah. So I think I, he, West Coast, he might want to go to the West Coast. I here's the list of the top ten free agents available. Go ahead. Soto, a pitcher from the Japan League. Oh yeah, I heard about that guy. Yeah. Roki Sasaki. Right. Corbin Burns. Burns is a yep. Yeah. W- Willie Adamas. Shortstop okay. from the Brewers. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Alex Bregman from yep, the Bregman. Astros. Yep. Max Freed. Pete Alonso is ranked seventh. Yep. Blake Snell is ranked eighth. Left handed pitcher from the Giants. That's right. He only Jack- signed a one year deal, right? Yep. Jack. Okay. Well, he's going to opt out. He had right. an opt out. Oh, opt out close. He- yeah. Jack Flaherty from the Dodgers. Yeah, I'm not sold and on And Sean that. Manea. Manea. So yeah. if you're okay. the Mets. All right, so if you're the Mets and you're not, you're not going to sign Soto. You've got to get at least two of those pitchers. Yeah, well, that's exactly. You try to sign Manaya first, and then get you need one other guy at least. Yep. So you, you got to kind of see what your numbers look like. Um, I th- and then I think they really got to concentrate on the bullpen. They got to get arms in that bullpen. Every both the Yankees and the Mets. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. No, have, no question. This is a bullpen era of baseball. You have to have a strong bullpen. Now with the even bullpen games that you have, yep. 
I mean, you have to have a strong bullpen regardless. You have to have, and not necessarily, I, I mean, you, the closer like Mariano is is not, you're not going to see that anymore. Let's face it. They just, you know, these guys, it's, it's almost closer by committee. If you have two good relief pitchers that could close out a game, well, that's, if you have two that's good relief good. pitchers, you don't have any. Well, I think that if you can get it to the point where, all right, who's a setup guy, who's a closer, now you're talking get your starter to go five, six innings, and then you got these two guys, you know, and, and hopefully you got a bridge guy. So it's right. just like what the Yankees did back in the 90s. And, and I mean, it, it's not that simple because you have Mariano, and you, nobody has a Mariano. He doesn't if, exist out there. So if, if I'm the Mets, this is what I do. I try to sign Pete Alonso back. Yeah. For, because he does a lot more for your team than just. I agree. Uh, I like than just. He's he he is a clubhouse guy. He be loved. He has the opportunity I to agree. break all of the power records in the history of the Mets. I think you got to bring him back. Absolutely, I and agree. Too. I get two of those three pitchers we talked about. I try to rebuild my bullpen. Absolutely, and, and then and then I go on the fringes. And try to team build. Yeah. Well, I think um, Stearns is good at picking out these kids from the Brewer system and guys like that. I think he has an, a knack for that. Which, yeah, I agree with him. Which I, I don't. I don't think you. Cashman has that. I really don't. I think Cashman I think is a little bit. Cashman by. Yeah, I think Cashman is a little bit maybe I don't know a little bit more versed with the with the with the veterans kind of thing but even then i mean i don't i don't see it you know going back to stick michael days and this is going way back stick michael was the guy who built the yankees of the 90s he was the guy he started it right he was a, a a talent expert and had even his scouts that were looking for you know to get the Derek Jeter's, the Jorge Posadas, the Mariano Rivera. He, he these guys are homegrown. They, th- this was stick under Stick Michael. He was the one who started. Now, is there a Stick Michael out there? I don't know. Maybe Stearns could be a Stick Michael kind of guy. He he looks like he could be. I don't know if he will be. Whatever. But I like what he did with the Mets. They have a lot of young talent, and if they can build their farm system. They could be something to be reckoned with for a long time. And I really think that, to be honest with you, uh, the Mets have a brighter future than the Yankees right now. They do. They just do. Okay. All right, so let's move on to the Yankees. All right, here's the Yankees free agents. Again, you'll go yes or no. Go ahead. Tim Hill. Gone. Clay Holmes. Um. Uh... Tough call. Tough call, depending on, tough on the numbers. Call. Go ahead. Next. Unless you can get a closer, right. then you could pair him. Right. Tommy Canely. I let him go. He Jonathan fuck, fucked up. In a big, it's one deal against him. Who? Uh, Jonathan Losaga. Losaga, I don't know what he's going to be like. Who knows what the hell his deal is. Next. All right, so we're going to say he goes. Yeah. Anthony Rizzo. See, I, I would like to sign Anthony Rizzo. But I know okay. they're not going. Juan Soto. Well, of course, you try to sign him. Next. Labor Torres. He's another guy. I think I would like to sign him, but they didn't even offer him the qualified offer. So Correct. Yeah, I think he's gone. Good. Next. All right. Uh, Lou Trevino. Keep him. Reliever. Oh, no. He's gone. They, they didn't yep. qualify. He's gone. Yeah, they didn't, yep, I'm thinking they didn't Trevino. I thought Trevino the catch. Yeah, Trevino. I'm sorry. And Alex Verdugo. Uh... For Dugo, I I would try to sign him. Um, it all depends on the Martian kid. I mean, you know, what are they going to do with this Jace Dominguez which guy? They're going to bring him up, keep him up, or what? Me, which leads me to my fix. Okay, Go this ahead. is what I do. From those free agents we just talked about, right? I bring back Clay Holmes if I can get him. At Set up, my man. Money. Set up, yep. man. If I can get him at my money, I'm bringing him back. As All far right. as Soto, here's the two numbers that you have to think about. $460.8 million and 46.08. Because those are the values of Shoei Otani's deal. 
That's the deferral adjusted. Right. Like everybody says, seven hundred million. Right. But it's actually value in today's money at four hundred sixty point eight million, and the yearly salary forty six point oh eight. Okay. Those are the numbers that Sotos is going. That Soto is going to go after, because Boris is his agent and he wants to beat those. That's the new record. All right. I mean, if you're the Yankees, you got to do it. Would you pay Soto forty seven million? Yes. Not my money, but yes. Okay. All right. Me, this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead. I, I'm i going to bid, and I'm going to have a drop-dead number, somewhere like $600 million, Okay. Which is going to come in below this figure. Okay. So it's going to be a take or leave. I don't think he's going to take it. Um. Yeah, I think what's going to happen – my gut tells me a team like San Francisco is is my team that swoops down because they lost out on Judge and they're going to get Soto. All I, right. So I, this, I, I just okay. I think I don't think he's going to nope. the Dodgers. Okay. I don't think he's going to the Cubs. Maybe the Cubs. Maybe. Maybe. This, okay. So this is what I say to you. This is how I fix it. Go ahead. In the free agent market. The first guy I'm going after is Alex Bregman, the third baseman from the right. Astros. Oh, yeah, we know Alex Bregman, sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on moving Chisholm to second base, Volpe at short. Then I'm going to try to sign Christian Walker, the first baseman from the Diamondbacks, hmm. who won a gold glove two years in a row. Yeah. I'm going to solidify my defense. Okay. If I can't sign him, I'm going to look to trade the Martian. And the first call I'm going to make is to the Cubs. And I'm going to try to get Cody Bellinger because he's left-handed. But for I wouldn't he, trade for Dominguez, though. Okay. He's got to be part of the package. Oh, but here, but I don't here, know. It's too why. much for him. I thought you were going okay. to say Trout. I thought you were going to say Trout. No, no, hang on. That's that's coming. That's coming. <laughs> I'm going to try to trade him for Cody Bellinger to put him at first base, and plus he could be a fourth outfielder for you. He's got he, he's, his defensive metrics are excellent. He's a left-handed power hitter. Yeah. You could plug him in for Rizzo. All right. If that falls through, and again, I cannot sign Soto, then – I'm dangling the Martian for Trout. Okay. I see, oh, I see what you mean. So if you get Soto, okay, I got you. And if you now, don't get Soto, okay, fair enough. Here's the thing about Dominguez. He's a prospect, but are you got the last, let's say, five to eight years with the Yankees, how many of their prospects have really panned out? Yeah, no, I, I agree. Except I, I, for Rizzo. Yeah, they haven't had they haven't had a prospect. All right, let's use yeah. Rizzo, King, and Smith. Other than those three guys, where their prospects panned out? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I don't think that their prospects uh, like that's the whole thing about Cashman and and the system. I don't know if he has the pulse of the prospects as well, or whoever is deciding I don't know the that, value yeah, of these I, guys. I don't know that the value of their farm system right now is what they think it is. Well, I just don't know if they have somebody who actually knows how good these players are, like a, like I said, like a Stick Michael. I think Stearns has that kind of knack because he's did it with the with the Brewers, and he and he brought these guys over to the Mets from the Brewers system, and they. They've worked out. They've panned out. That's the difference with these with these guys. But whatever. For third base, we shall I'll give see. You two other names, real quick. All right, real quick. Watch Willie Adonis, right? The shortstop from Milwaukee, because see if he's willing to play third base, right? And, and I would watch the guy, the short, the second baseman, shortstop, third baseman from the Padres, Hassan Kemp. He's good. He's a he was on my fantasy team, and he's yep. a he's a nice player. He could play all over the place. I think he'd be a good guy off the bench. But 
you know, I don't know but if you put them in a store. Because if storm you're worried mode. about going over the cap figure of nah, 312 million, I don't want to hear that for the Yankees. A, you're going to have a problem signing Soto. Yeah. So it's I, going to be real. I don't want to hear cap going over the luxury tax from the Yankees. The Yankees could have signed Kaya Stremski. Do you know that the Yankees could have signed Kaya Stremski? Because, and he went to the Red Sox because the Red Sox offered him the same amount of money. He said, shit, I'm going to go to the Red Sox because they offered the same amount of money as the Yankees. And the Yankees did, could have offered more. And he said, screw it. And he's a Long Island guy, Kaya Stremski, by the way. Imagine if Kaya Stremski was on the, on the Yankees. In the and 60s and 70s. kind of hard hit information that you get yeah. with this podcast. Off that's the right. Damn it. So chime in with us and let us know what you think. Off the chest 84 at yahoo.com. Hey, yeah. And I'm going to leave you with this. I got a, just a couple of quick notes before All we right, end the show. Uh, we got a, a signing, uh, Matt Ryan. Uh, from Westchester County, from Iona Prep, who played with my son Thomas, signed with the Knicks. Sharp shooter. Yep, I think Knicks. I think he signed a two way deal today, and also uh, the kid Tyler Kolick, is that his name? The the yep. yeah, he. I got some info on my nephew. From Marquette. Yep, he's from Marquette. He he is from Rhode Island. So yes. my nephew, who's the assistant basketball coach, Rich, over at Johnson & Wales, was telling me that this kid evidently is a gamer. I mean, and I just read an article today that Thibodeau loves this kid. He says he's tough. And my nephew, Rich, told me that players that played with him and against him say he's tough as nails and is the real deal, uh, and he's not just some, you know, uh, player who they got and, uh, you know, the, the later rounds and blah, blah, blah. They said this kid could be something, so let's keep an eye I, on him. I think, that, I think the Knicks are still a work in progress. They are totally a work in progress. They're 500 right now, That so that they are definitely got to work it out. Did they beat out. the Rockets last night? No, they lost. That's what kind of okay. pissed me off. And guess what? If you look at their numbers, you're like, how the hell did they lose to the Rockets? I mean, they the all. Rockets they, are a good gun too. They, they, hey, there you go. You just you now just said it. Now that we put a bow on the baseball season, now we can start moving into the yes. fall. Yes, we'll be we'll be talking about hoops. We got college hoops right around the corner. We just had a few games here and there, so we'll be talking about college hoops too coming up, uh, and everything else. Uh, and uh, today, and in between, and we're going to be talking about cover bands and cover bands. Yep. You know, T I just thought of another cover band while we were talking. What other like band? Up in my way. Go ahead. E B Jeb, Joe. Okay. Southern so, rock at its finest. So e if you if you saw any of those bands back in the day, let us know on our email at off the chest eighty four at yahoo.com. Yes. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to our show. We will see you next week, right, Z Man? We're good for next week. And we'll, we'll let, let you know how we did. you know something that I don't know, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Well, today is is election day, so let's let's hope next get week. Get out the vote. <laughs> get out the, the vote, vote, baby. Vote for Off the Chest is your favorite podcast. Absolutely. All right. Till we meet again. Good night from Off the Chest. <laughs> <laughs>